Welcome to Fox TV News, where everything is true. 16-year-old Tison Megu Mason, 16-year-old Tison Megu of Connery Road, Cockburn Gardens, Kingston 11, has been missing since Tuesday, February 22nd. She is of dark complexion, slim build, and about 165 centimeters tall. Reports from the Olympic Gardens Police are that Tison was last seen at home wearing a cream blouse with school requests red and yellow tie, brown belt and brown skirt. All efforts to locate her have proven futile. Anyone knowing the whereabouts of the San Miguel is being asked to contact the Olympic Gardens Police at 876-923-5468-119 or hear the children's cry at 929-0431 or 294-8124. St. Andrew Teen Missing 15-year-old Timira Cargill of Constant Spring Road, St. Andrew, has been missing since Wednesday, February 23rd. She is of dark complexion, same build, and about 5 feet 5 inches tall. Reports from the Constant Spring Police are that about 2.30 p.m., Timira was last seen at home, dressed in a black truck suit with pink stripes in the side seam. She has not been heard from since. Anyone knowing the report of Timira Cargill? Is being asked to contact the Constituting Police at 876 924 1421 119 or hear the children's cry at 929 0431 or 294 8124. 108 farm workers leave for Canada. A total of 108 seasonal agricultural workers left the island on Thursday, February 24 for Canada to take up employment in Ontario and its environments. The customer sent off ceremony was held for the workers at the Ministry of Labor and Social Security's Overseas Employment Services Centre, downtown Kingston. In his remarks, Minister of Labor and Social Security Carl Samudo said it is the intention of the government to move aggressively to get a larger share of the employment market in Canada. When I look at the numbers who are going abroad, I can hardly see anyone at all going to Alberta that is the wheat bed, that's where majority of the agriculture operates. But there is nobody from Jamaica going to those farms, and I asked the question why Samoda said. He noted that the liaison officers should concentrate on gaining access to that market. I know there is competition from other countries, but the competition cannot outdo the skills and commitment and hard-working nature of the Jamaican workers if we really strive to achieve market share for the region of Canada, Samoda stated. Instead of having 9,000 workers annually, I am looking to increase that to a minimum of 100% over the next three years, because I know that the market is there. It's a question of how diligent we pursue, through our liaison officers, the involvement of those provinces, he added. The minister further noted that the Overseas Employment Program is a partnership that must be cherished and treated with the greatest degree of importance. It elevates the standard of living of the Jamaican family at home, and so, I really cannot impress upon you any more the importance of the mission you are embarking on. I want you to enjoy yourselves, become a part of the community from which you work, and gain the support and confidence of those whom you work for, Samoda to the workers. For her part, Canadian High Commissioner to Jamaica encourages Jamaicans to know their rights, adding that, you have a right to be paid for the work you do, and you must be paid. Samoda also commissioned into service two mobile units to its fleets of buses to enhance the overseas employment program. $104 million budgeted to finalize works on foreign affairs building. The government has budgeted an additional sum of $104.43 million to finalize the establishment of the new headquarters of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Foreign Trade in downtown Kingston. Funding provisions were made in the 2022-2023 estimates of expenditure to complete the furnishing, installation of communication infrastructure, landscaping, and minor external works during the upcoming fiscal year. The 11-story building, for which the ministry began its operation in May last year, accommodates 285 members of staff, spanning 17 departments. It comprises a two-story annex building a generator room, boundary wall, and parking area, among other features. The project aims to provide customized office space for the ministry 
that adequately supports its needs in terms of accommodation of staff, meeting and conference facilities, and waiting here for the diplomats and other visitors. It also seeks to contribute to the redevelopment of downtown Kingston by virtue of the relocation of the ministry to that area. Up to December 2021 under the project, the building and finishes external infrastructure and landscaping were completed. Following several extensions, the project, which began in April 2008, is now scheduled to be completed in March 2023. The project is being undertaken by the Ministry with funding from the Government of Jamaica and the Government of the People's Republic of China. 22-year-old slapped with multiple robbery charges 22-year-old Ricardo Shores Brown, otherwise called Brown Strap of Bridgeport, Port Martin, Catherine, has been charged with robbery and aggravation, illegal possession of firearm and ammunition, and conspiracy to commit robbery stemming from an incident which occurred on Sunday, February 20. Reports from the Portmore Police are that about 8.50 p.m., Brown armed with a knife, along with another man who was armed with a gun, held up and robbed a delivery man of his motorcycle, cellular phone, cash, and other items including food for delivery. The total lost amount is $288,520. Brown and the other man escaped on the stolen motorcycle. The back was traced and later recovered by the police, and Brown arrested and subsequently charged. Manchester Costos Launches Beliefs, Values and Attitudes Initiative Costos of Manchester Garfield Green says as of Thursday, schools in his southern central parish are set to benefit from the launch of the Beliefs, Values and Attitudes program. We are promoting patriotism in our school, social responsibilities among the youth, he said on Wednesday. The BVA program is aimed at facilitating attitudinal change and social revitalization. Green said Poor's Infant School will be the first institution to benefit from the formation of a uniform group through the program. We will also be launching a uniform group because we think it is the best day for us to do it, he said. We believe that the uniform groups can help to instill discipline within our young people, so we'll be launching the girls' badge at that school. We have formed a partnership with candidates, scouts, among other groups. We will be working with them in going across the entire parish with the program. Where we don't have a uniformed group, we will seek to launch one, he said. He added that as part of the Jamaica Day celebration in schools, the national flag will be raised and flown at Port's Infant School all day Friday. Trinityville Residents Long for Good Water Supply Several residents of the Trinityville St. Thomas say their daily lives are being disrupted because the National Waters Commission NWC supply to their communities is inconsistent. The residents say this makes necessary tasks such as washing, cooking, and cleaning difficult. When reporters visited the rural area last week, 71-year-old Vin Levy, who has lived in the community for several years, said she does not understand what the problem is, as NWC workers have reassured her on numerous occasions that the water would return soon. However, Levy said weeks often go by without the essential commodity. When the water lock off, we will have none of all for two weeks, she said. 60-year-old Yvonne Shepard, another resident, said she sees NWC workers often, but they only give her false hope as the problem continues. Shepard, who cares for her two grandchildren, added that the water crisis affects them as most days they have no running water to bathe for school in the mornings. School starts at 7, so sometimes at 6 o'clock they have to go to the river, and you know that's dangerous, she said, adding that this worries her especially since most times they don't have a choice. She appealed to the NWC to create a schedule for the water supply so residents can better prepare. Them NWC lock off the water and left and gone. They don't care about the people them, she said. At first living here, you could always go out of water every three days. Them normally just lock it off overnight and by the other day you get water, but this year are the worst. Further, Paulette59 said she grew up learning to depend on the river in lot of portable water, but pollution has impacted that dependence. Me is a river person, so any little thing, I will go down by the river, she said, but not every resident can manage to go there. The water from the river can be used for washing and cleaning, but it is not always safe for drinking. 
Paulette, however, believes the problem would be solved if a water truck comes to serve the community when the water is off. It's not every person can afford bottled water, so when there is an issue, the truck should come and just supply water to those who cannot access the river, she said. Natty, 60-year-old, told reporters he is frustrated with the water situation in Trinityville and believes the community road that is being fixed has contributed to the water troubles. His main concern, however, is about drinking water from the river. We no love drink the river water because too much nastiness water in it. He said, adding that he at times asks his neighbors for water when the river gets dirty. Corporate communications manager of the NWC, Andrew Cannon, says Trinityville is supplied water by regulating the value used to the pump. He says the valve is designed to serve the upper, middle, and lower sections of the community on a scheduled basis. But he says the regulation is seasonal and this causes elevation areas to be without water even during their scheduled times of supply. Cannon also says the community road construction has interfered with the NWC piping system. Due to ongoing road improvement work, from time to time, there are breaks on the line and our teams are constantly in the area carrying out repairs to these damaged pipelines, he said. Cannon added that it is difficult to avoid disturbances to the water supply because the water network is old and there is an increase in the demand for water from each part of the community. He added that there are new pipelines at Crab River that will connect with the pipelines in Trinityville for better supply. Chief Justice wants special facility for future mega trials. Chief Justice charging that there seems to be no end in sight for the ongoing trial of 33 alleged members of the Klansman gang, the cost of which is likely to be astronomical, has called on the state to stop dancing around the issue and establish a special facility for such matters. Throwing down the granite Thursday, during a pause in the proceedings, the Chief Justice declared that a trial of that magnitude of this one can never be attempted again unless it is under the right circumstances. The trial, considered to be the mother of all trials, is the first of its kind in the Caribbean, with many defendants being tried in one go and representation by more than 40 attorneys. The matter which began last September has been hit by a suite of premature adjournments, such of which were brought on by situations connected to the ongoing novel corona pandemic. The Chief Justice, who at the start of the matter had indicated that it would be lengthy, has been chiding attorneys involved in the matter over their treatment of several aspects of the case. The latest issue arose after it became apparent after a close to two hour after the trial resumed Thursday that there were no transcripts for a significant portion of recording which were being played. The recording were extracted from three devices which witness number one, a former gang member turned crown witness, had testified that he turned over the phone with recording of conversations between himself and members of the gang, including alleged leader Andre Blackman Bryan. Defense attorney Lloyd McFarlane, who represents Bryan, was the first to call attention to the issue, pointing out that it was difficult to follow the proceedings without transcription as the recordings were not in all instances clear. Chief Justice, in underscoring the importance of the transcripts and the need for speed in the proceedings, said, We are talking about the case that is taking up one Supreme Court year. One Supreme Court year is almost two terms and the end is nowhere in sight. So this is telling me that the on go forward, this cannot happen again, two terms and two courtrooms. It cannot happen again. We will either have to be legislation or something to deal with these kinds of cases because ordinary proceedings can't deal with them, the Chief Justice stated, who is presiding over the judge alone trial declared. It is now consuming a lot of time and resources. The cost of this now is getting to where the legitimate questions can now be asked, he stated further. In the meantime, the trial judge made it clear that other recordings for which the Crown Thursday indicated that it had no transcripts will not be heard until the scripts are furnished. This after the Crown indicated that there were no transcripts for several of the audio recordings that are to come on the basis that the witness is no longer available for the police. A senior prosecutor explained that just before the trial began, the witness had been taken into protective custody and was no longer in the island, and as such, the transcripts for a particular set of recordings had not been done. 
we are supposed to listen to those recordings without transcripts that cannot be and that's unalternable and non-negotiable so we have to make up our minds whatever needs to be done to get the witness and the transcriptionist together needs to be done said the trial judge on being further informed that the analysts working on the call dates or information received from the island's two main telecoms providers has been incapacitated further delayed the process of those recordings because provided for the court the chief just said this underscores the point i've been making for the last two years that these types of cases must take place in a purpose-built facility the authorities refused to budge on this we are now going into the easter term and with all the various of trials might very well go on to my commerce term the attendance cost there is not such thing as an unlimited budget so for trials like this there has to be a different arrangement the authorities can't be dancing away from it the chief justice declared he bolstered his argument by pointing out that with the pandemic warning and jury trials also being resumed the court was handicapped by the fact that it has two courtrooms that cannot be used because of the trial there has to be a better way the chief justice added please remember to subscribe like share and click the notification bell for daily updates